Putin in panic mode? Watch what happens when US unleashes this lethal missile. Russians have to counter a new formidable weapon in their invasion of Ukraine, the GLSDB, or the Ground Launch Small Diameter Bomb. The US has provided Ukraine with these bombs and military experts estimate their induction in the Ukrainian army can help change the tide of the battle. But how and why is the GLDSB so important? Stay tuned to find out. But before we continue, I would request you to subscribe to our channel. Thank you. Most military experts and current affairs journalists have previously reported that NATO has only provided Ukraine with mostly obsolete and outdated military weapons, which cannot go toe-to-toe -to -toe with Russia's advanced weapons system. There is a lot of truth to that statement, but this statement may no longer be true. The Americans have already provided the latest M777 howitzers, M109 Paladins, which are basically self-propelled artillery systems capable of shooting a target up to 30 kilometers away, latest anti-aircraft missiles, the best rocket launchers including XM142 and M270. This February, the White House also announced that it will provide Ukraine with GLSDB or the Ground Launch Small Diameter Bomb. It is important to mention that these weapons have never been used in battle before, and it does have the capacity to change the fate of this war. The M142 HIMARS system, which was delivered earlier to Ukraine, was important in stopping the Russian offensive since it was able to strike deep into Russian-controlled territory and effectively destroyed key Russian armaments along with important Russian personnel. So what does the GLSDB do exactly? This weapon system is a combination of two weapon systems which on their own would have already been decommissioned but now with their added capacity, have become a potent new weapon. The weapon has several unique characteristics and can be manufactured at an extremely low cost. In the early 2000s, the US Army built a GBU-39 small diameter bomb. This weapon was specifically designed to be used by stealth fighter jets so that they can carry these armaments in their inner compartments. For a plane to retain its stealthy profile, it is important that the plane does not carry any armament on its pylons. Carrying external armaments on slings increases the radar signature of these planes, drastically reducing their stealth capacity. GBU-39 was the ideal solution. It could be placed in the internal weapons bay of the F-22 Raptor in large quantities without compromising its stealth. The weapon also gave Raptor, originally an air superiority fighter, something to offer in the way of air-to-ground armaments. The bomb itself was composed of a very narrow and elongated body so that a higher number of these bombs could be fitted in the plane. With all of its attachments and its wings folded, the weapon did not exceed a length of 59 feet and was only 7.5 inch in diameter. The weapon itself was 285 pounds and had 36 pounds of impact resistant armament. These armaments were enclosed in a steel casing through which armored targets could be destroyed. The bomb was guided through satellite and laser guidance which gave it a tremendous accuracy. It has been estimated that the weapon itself does not deviate more than one meter on average. The first series of these bombs were delivered in 2008, and the armament was on its way to being phased out. A more advanced version of this bomb, called the GBU-53 Stormbreaker, was set to replace it. The new GBU-53 is a precision-guided glide bomb, which has a semi-active laser, a passive infrared laser, and can engage with moving targets. In the war against terror, about 45,000 of these GBU-39 bombs were produced, and more than half of these weapons are still unused. The new GLSDB was created when Boeing worked in close cooperation with Saab, which is a Swedish company. Saab advocated using a rocket booster with the original GBU-39 bombs, enabling them to be launched from the ground. This new capacity would make this gliding air-to-surface bomb essentially a short-range cruise missile. To realize its true potential, a suitable rocket engine had to be developed. Around this time, the US Army was removing the M26 HIMARS system, which made hundreds of thousands of unused, fully operational solid fuel rockets available. All that was needed was to add bombs to these rockets and voila, we have ourselves a GLSDB. This was essentially a GBU-39 bomb equipped with a HIMARS rocket motor. The bomb itself weighed around 285 pounds, which was less than its original weight. The weapon used to be about 345 pounds when used with its original M26 cluster. The weapon is launched with a HIMARS rocket motor from a high angle so as to reach a maximum altitude. Upon reaching this angle, the rocket motor is dropped and the glide bomb opens its wings and glides towards a target. The bomb release not only glides but also is able to change its direction as well as change its altitude, ascending or descending its height depending on the coordinates given. It is for this reason that these bombs are called bouncing bombs. Even so, the GLSDB's trajectory changing capability is beyond comparison. For instance, when tested in 2017, the GLSDB could now turn 180 degrees and hit a target about 72 kilometers behind its back. 
This kind of maneuverability can be extremely important when engaging targets in urban areas where the population is dense and angle of approach to the target can be a bit tricky. Furthermore, this capability also gives the launcher a unique ability of engaging multiple targets in a single salvo. The bombs could also engage targets located in almost impossible angles such as the back of a mountain or buried behind deep cover, which need armor penetration. In the latter case, the bomb will simply fly behind the target and approach it from behind. This could be extremely useful. Overall, the weapon system can be used to engage a target 90 miles away. In this respect, the weapon is a better alternative to the GMLRS systems which were delivered to Ukraine and had a range of only 50 miles. In contrast, the GMLRS had a more explosive warhead. The GLSDB has a more localized effect on target, but due to its speed and maneuverability, gives it an edge when engaging buildings and bunkers. The GLSDB could potentially destroy a target, which was hiding behind 5 feet of solid concrete. At the same time, the speed of GMLRS is more than the speed of flight of GLSDB, which actually makes it easier to counter in the air. This disadvantage can be mitigated by advanced complex planning of the weapon's trajectory combined with its lower flight altitude. Combined with other factors, the weapon had a dispersion of only 0.17 square feet, making it an intermediate missile, which can be placed between GMLRS missiles and the MGM-140 ATACMS, which are tactical missiles with a range of up to 185 miles. The advantage of a GLSDB missile is that it only costs around 40,000 US dollars. In comparison, the GMLRS costs somewhere between 100,000 to 160,000 USD, and the MGM-140 tactical missiles can cost up to 2.3 million dollars. It is also essential to compare the strike capabilities and features with the Russian equivalent, the Multiple Launch Rocket Systems Grid, or SMERCH, and Tornado, which have been used against Ukraine. Smirch has a maximum range of only 26 miles and Tornado S has a range of only 75 miles. Both of these rocket systems have a huge dispersion which can be as much as a third of a mile. Armed with a GLSDB, the Ukrainian army would be able to target military installations as far as 90 miles. This means that this new armament could target Russian airfields from which Russian planes launch air raids. This would make the Russian retreat further south and delay their operations. In addition, the whole weapon system does not cost a whole lot and the Ukrainians could launch these weapons in salvo. The Russian air defense system could potentially shoot down a multitude of these rockets in air, but what if these weapons were launched in swarms? What would happen then? Will the Russians be able to cope with this threat? Comment down below and press the like button and subscribe to the channel for watching similar content. Thank you!